Hi everybody and welcome to another how to video. This one runs to about 17 minutes and the chapters are in the description down below. We're almost at the end of 2021 and what a year it's been. Family Historian 7 was released late 2020. Roots Magic began a 9 month community preview of Roots Magic 8. A bit like a giant beta test with thousands of testers. The program was released end of September. It's still missing several features and there's still a lot of problems to be ironed out. Heritage 2022 was also released, so it's been a very busy year in the genealogy software world. 2022 brings the release of the 1921 UK Census and also the 1950 US Census. So there's lots of work and preparation we can all be getting on with. In this video I'm going to show you how you can dig into your database, the uncover census work still to be completed, and also make your preparations for the upcoming census releases. We can all pump information into our databases, but it's important that we can get it out. I'm sure you've heard of data mining. Well, it's a bit difficult if the mine has collapsed or you have difficulty getting to the important parts of it. Roots Magic recommend a report called the Who Was There report, and that has some use, but I find it deeply flawed. It's extremely slow, so I'll attempt to show you a better way, both in Roots Magic 7 and also in Family Historian 7. So here we are in Roots Magic 7, you go to reports, lists, go right down the bottom here and you'll find who is there list. Create report. I'm just putting in here Dibury and a date range I'm putting in 1850 to 1950. Dibury is a township in Wayne County, Pennsylvania. So we're talking about quite a small area. So really I want to have anybody who has a connection with Dibury. I'm going to run a timer when we're running this report, so I'm just going to move this slightly down out of the way. Bring on my timer, and I click Generate Report. Bring my timer back on screen. I will reset it and start the time. Okay, so there's our report. I'm just going to call that 42 minutes. But remember, that's 42 minutes where I can do nothing else in Roots Magic 7. And here's our report. And you can see that I, it identifies people that have a connection with Dibri. My problem with the report is it's a flat report. In other words, if I make an adjustment in Roots Magic, it doesn't reflect on this report. So I need to spend another 42 minutes, maybe on a daily basis, regenerating this report. So here we are in Roots Magic 8, and we can see the properties on the left is 45221 individuals, 15212 families. Importantly, possibly is the 165562. That's 165,000 events. That might be the pertinent thing in creating this report. So we go to publish. I have the who was there report just here. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit to coexist with the clock. We have the same parameters, Dibury, 1850 to 1950, and the rest are all default settings. Let me bring my clock on screen, reset it, and I'm going to generate the report. Now this is going to take considerably longer than RM7. It'll be interesting to see what the result is. I'll start the clock. Your eyes are not deceiving you. We've just passed the one hour mark in Roots Magic 8. So that's already 20 minutes longer than Roots Magic 7. So there we are, report generated. I'm going to call that 1R45. Now I have demonstrated before that Roots Magic 8 is considerably more clicky and considerably slower to use than Roots Magic 7 ever was. I would hope that Roots Magic Development see these videos and they go off and improve the performance of this product. So here we are in Family History and I use this view a lot. You move it about wherever you want. It's called the All Relatives Diagram. So we go here, we go Query. I'm going to go Query Window. Um, this brings me into where I start to build my queries. Now, every query I build and test, I can then save. So here's my list of queries, and I'm going to shoot down to Missing Census Years USA Custom. And you can see I've populated in here the description I have for this census return. Moving to the next one, these are the columns that I want to be displayed. 
and you can see that unlike Roots Magic, I can actually display columns for individual census years just by defining those properly. Next one is the rows. This is what we want to include and exclude. So I'm excluding any birth date that was later than 1950 and I'm excluding any death date that was earlier than 1850. And in this simple case, and I usually have a surname parameter here, but in this simple case, I've just got the place. So let me run this for you. I'll just go here. Here's the run query. And I put in diary. And I can put in part of the diary thing. Now, that took about a second to run. There was no trick photography there. And here's all of our individual census years. Roots Magic can't do this, but this is a very good indicator of where I have gaps that I can see here. And it's not so important to me in USA records, but on Irish records, father's name and the occupation of the father comes in very, very handy. There's always a lot of talk about how to save things and analyze them further in Roots Magic. Really, in Family Historian, I don't need to do that. I can do it all on screen. But for example, this report, if I do Control A, Control C, jump over to Excel and just do Control V. And there's my report straight into Excel. I don't need to do anything else with it. If people do that because they want to sort in, in particular different ways. If I go back to um, Family Historian, I can, I can sort any of these columns whatever way I want. Have all my 1900 census completes and I can look for the gaps. Now in my sort routine I had this defined uh, to sort by forename. It's easy to look down. I can see there's uh, two Cliffords here. But these are two different people. I can also see down here that there are two Leroy's. But again, they're two different people. And any one of these I can open them up and see the Reddit person screen, see their facts and make edits or whatever way I want. You can't do that on the Roots Magic report because it's a flat report. In other words, you can't interact with it. The one record that sort of stumped me when I looked at it earlier was this particular one here. So if you look down through this person's facts, she wasn't born in Dibury. Her birth of her spouse is not in Dibury, not that that should have mattered. She wasn't married in Dibury. She died in Carbondale. So what is her connection with Dibury? If I click on her obituary fact, and let me just scroll this down a bit. If we look down through her obituary here, we'll see that she came to Holmesdale, blah, blah, blah. And when we go down here, she was actually interred in Great Diary Cemetery. So that's in a notes field. And we can set Roots Magic up to, to look for anybody with a connection. It's just a little bit lo more long-winded. And the one important thing, despite promises from many, many years ago, is once you've created a very smart sort of query in Roots Magic, you can't save it so that you can quickly use it again. So I have various options here. This is my re result set for want of a better word. So I can go to the tools here. I can save the result sets as PDF, CSV, or text file. And people usually do that in Roots Magic so that they can go and analyze it further and maybe have it to the side. We'll look at the Roots Magic report later. But the problem is, is I update things from the PDF file. They don't disappear from the PDF file. So that's not the best option for me here. Here we can do add selected records to a named list. And I can create a named list. I'm just going to call this Dibury Census Chase. I can replace anything that's currently in such a list. So I go back to my records window and you can see here I have my named list. So the one interesting thing I want you to also note here, I, I can configure this as a split screen if I want. I can have it small if I want. And this is my main records window. I have the text enlarged. You go to tools, preferences, and you can go to display and you can just set your, your text here to whatever you prefer. Just like the old Roots Magic 7, Roots Magic 8 doesn't have that function. The other thing that's not notable in Roots Magic and being asked for many, many times is the count of what, whom, how many people are in this group. So our Diabury census chase here, we can see there's 53 people on it. This window here, or pane, whatever you want to call it, I can configure that whatever way I want for whatever group I want. Because each of these groups would have different needs. 
And this is another thing that I asked for a long time ago in Roots Magic. So let me click on my Diary Census date. So I have this set up that I have the birth, I have the record number, birth, marriage and death dates. And I can drill down into any one of these or several of these by clicking down, clicking the right arrow and seeing more information. And when I, I normally have this on 10 point, it's on 14 at the moment, so I can see a lot more information here. The only thing that from, um, I have to say to Family Historian, the only thing I miss here is that unlike people viewing Roots Magic, when I highlight John Gracie up here, I just get his name highlighted. I don't get a, a through highlight on the row. Now when I have this on 10 point on a 32 inch screen, that can be quite hard to follow across when I have many data sets along, you know, set up on this screen. So let's go back and have a look at Roots Magic 7. I'm not going to touch on Roots Magic 8 again. I don't like the clunkiness of creating a custom query. So we're going to look at Roots Magic 7 and how we can get a similar amount of information out from that program. So basically in the case of this census, I have family and, and connections all over the world. I'm primarily interested in people in around Diabry at this point. This is for this example. I could expand that to Wayne County itself and it would give me a much bigger data set. But this is just for this example. Firstly, I would create a group. And how you create a group is you click on this little tab up here. Click here and click new. I'm going to mark the group by select people by data fields. So that's going to select everybody that I tell it. So I'm going to go for any fact uh, place equals or contains diary. I'm going to say or any place details diary. That's going to bring in the, the place itself diary and it's going to maybe bring in the cemetery diary, uh, which is, I don't know whether it's classified as being part of the town or not. And I click OK and it's found 30 people. So I'm going to unmark some people. So I'm going to clear the people by data fields. So I'm going to do death date is before or birth date is after. That's going to leave me with people who lived between 1850 and 1950. We say OK. OK, and here we name the group Diary Census Chase. So what we can do, go out, select your groups tab here, select your drop down, select your Diary Census Chase. Here's the same individuals basically that we had in the Family Historian example. But on the top of Roots Magic 7, click the Timeline view. So as you move down through each of these individuals, you can see that Betty J here has no census information whatsoever. She was born in 1930. Elmer R, again, born 1918, no census information. Third person down, Esther, no census information. Sorry, except for a census shared with Clifford C. Pettaway. So as we move down, you'll see more of these are more expansive than others. So we can see here that um, Mary Alice Blackwell, it's an 1870 census, 1980 census. We're not talking about 1890 because we know it's a problem. 1900, 1910 and so forth. You can see that our example who had the, I can't remember the name now, but who had the thing, the mentioned in her obituary, she's not part of this group. I'm going to go to group again. I'm going to say diary census chase. I'm going to edit it and I'm going to further mark people by data fields. But this time I'm going to do any fact note contains diary. And it's called it four people. Those four people will now be added to our group. And here we can see Bernice Lucy Whitney and her obituary for the which is in the Holmesdale Citizen. And if we click on the note, we can see that Diabry is mentioned in the note. So you can get these results in Roots Magic 7. Roots Magic 8 I just stay away from because it's too long winded to, to use. Using this timeline view, you can see a lot of the information that you want and you can drill in further. I can see that these are pretty scant on information. And if I was 
wanting to strengthen my census information for this area, these are certainly a people that I need to look up for all of those years. And if we look at Eleanor R, back in family historian, here's Eleanor R here. No census events, and really I need to strengthen that. If I go back to my records window and my named list, if I configure this, I can do configure columns, select an individual, relationship to root, and add that in. Okay, and now suddenly we have so relationship to root here, and I go down, and I can see my, my different great half uncles, second cousin once removed. I can see all that data on screen here. And this is live. Um, if I update something, in, I don't have to run relationship tools like you do in Roots Magic. This updates itself. So to truncate dates in here and save screen space, if I go back to configure columns, birth, edit, I use this abbreviate for just to get the birth year. I just want the abbreviation here as an indication to save screen space. So there you are, that's how things are done in Family Historian. You've seen how things can be done in Roots Magic 7. Roots Magic 8 is much more difficult. So this is Family Historian back to my preferred font, which is 10 point. And you can see that my ancestors diagram is still here on the left. I can flick back to that any time. So also the all relatives diagram, it's not something you have to close and open up again. So let's pick this guy, Joseph Ford. We'll do all relatives. And here's his tree. But you'll notice that all of these trees stack down the left hand side here. So I can go back to them and I can continue stacking new ones down here. So I hope I've been able to give you some inspiration to help get data out of your database. No point in it being in there and it's buried. You know, we do need to extract these things and we need to build on them. If you want to follow my video journey on ways to structure and extract information from both Roots Magic 7 and Family Historian 7, then click the subscribe button down below and click the bell to get notifications of when new videos are published. And don't forget to check out these videos in the end credits.